Today we're going to learn about gravitational potential energy. Let's say for example that I'm lifting up a book. So I'm going to lift a book up to some certain height, h. In other words, I'm going to apply a force on the book. I'm going to lift it up a distance, h. In other words, I'm doing work, right? So let's imagine that I did 100 joules of work on this object, on this book. And let's say the book's up here. So the big question is, well, where did that work go? Where did that energy go? I had to eat some food, right? Ate some food. There it is. I changed that into work, 100 joules of it. So where did it go? Well, we'd say that energy is now stored in the book itself. So the book now has 100 joules of stored energy. And this stored energy is what we call gravitational potential energy. So let's just define this as a stored energy. So potential energy, gravitational, we use the symbol UG. This is stored energy due to the position in a gravitational field. Okay, in other words, we're in this gravitational field and we now have this energy stored at this point. And how do we know it's energy? Well, this can do work. If I now all of a sudden l let go of this book, this book's going to come down, it's going to slam on my foot, it's going to apply a force times a distance on my foot, and I'm going to feel that in the form of pain. So this is what we refer to as a, a potential energy. Let's go ahead and derive this equation for potential energy. So um, we can do it simply using the, the visual that I have here and that if energy is conserved, right, if uh, E initial equals E final, then our initial energy here was our work. That must be our final energy, which we're now calling U sub G. Well, work is force times distance. In this case, I'm applying a force upward right the weights pulling back down so my force must be exactly equal to that weight I'm lifting the weight so this would be mg times d equals ug now we typically instead of using a d the symbol d we use the symbol of h so I'm just gonna go ahead and write that as mg h here Okay. Now one important thing you do have to consider is what we refer to as a reference point. So for example, if I have a book on a desk, if I call my reference point the desk itself, h equals zero, then you can see well, our potential energy is also equal to zero. However, if we say, oh, my reference point is down here, say the floor, and I make that my h equals zero. Well, now you can see the book. Let's imagine it's one meter above the floor. The book now does have a potential energy. And in this case, we would say, oh, the potential energy is mg times the h, or h is going to be one meter. So it's not zero. So imagine this was two kilograms. Then we'd say, OK, the potential energy of the book is now two times 9.8 which is 19.6 joules. All right, so you have to define your reference point. In this case, we said it's zero. In this case, we said it's, if we call this the reference point, it would be 19.6. Um, what if we want another meter above? Well, if we want another meter above, again, it would depend. If we called this our reference point, then it would be 19.6 up here. If we called this our reference point, then it would be double that, or 39.2 up here. So it doesn't honestly matter what you define as your reference point as long as you kind of stay consistent with it and kind of predefine it. We typically choose the lowest point in the problem to be our reference point. Okay. All right. One last thing I wanted to do with this is just give you the concept of uh, conservation of energy how we would use this, and actually I use this already in my derivation. But you can also think of it this way. Let's go back to this book. If I lift this up here, let's say that it has 100 joules of energy now at this point of potential. 
Well, the question is, what happens if I drop that book? So if I drop that book, notice it's getting lower and lower and lower. This is my ground point. So down here, let's say it hasn't hit the ground yet, right before it hits the ground, well, how much potential does it have at that point? Well, if our H is zero, then it's gonna have zero joules of potential energy. So again, the question is, well, where did that go? Well, in this case, it's speeding up. And as it's speeding up, it's turning into that other type of energy, energy of motion, we call kinetic energy. So if we started with 100, then right before it hits the ground, it would now have 100 joules of kinetic energy. Up here, notice since it's not moving, we have, I don't know what I'm trying to do here. Up here, we would say the kinetic is equal to zero. And then we're changing, as it drops, we're changing to um, more and more kinetic. What about in the middle? What kind of energy would we have here at the halfway point? Well, since H is one half, then that means we'd have exactly half potential energy. And if we started with 100, if we have half potential energy, then our other half must be in kinetic. We'd have 50 joules of kinetic. So all through this falling point, it's going to be changing, right, from potential into kinetic. And then most of the times it has both of them, but at the two extremes it has all of one and zero of the other. What about when it hits and stops? Where did it go then? Well, I'll leave that up to you to try to think about and figure out.